everyone welcome back to my channel I'm really excited today because I am making a bread for the first time and I've been wanting to do this for a while but just haven't gotten around to it so for to start I got a bread baking for beginners book and have been reading it and just been feeling inspired and through this book though um, they said I needed a few tools which I didn't have so I purchased a Dutch oven for my bread making and I also purchased a scale and a thermometer and a bread basket as well so come along with me today as I make my first loaf of bread and I'm very excited because I've never done this before all right so the bread that we're going to be making today is called is called no need bread and basically what we're going to be using is we're going to be using some yeast here and i just have the recipe book here because i am a newbie at this so i'm going to have some we're going to be using some yeast we're going to be using some flour we're going to be using some salt and some water so just four ingredients i mean who knew that that's really all it takes to make bread the first thing that i need to do it says it's to find the temperature of my kitchen with a thermometer and the temperature of my kitchen, it looks like is 78 degrees. Take the temperature of your flour while it's sitting out at room temperature. Room temperature. Should I just put this in the flour? I think the temperature of my flour is at 78 degrees. So my air and flour temperature is 78. Okay, and I figured out the water temperature. We're gonna take the desired dough temperature, which is always gonna be at 75 degrees, times that by three, that's 225. And it says because there are three factors, flour temperature, air temperature, and water temperature. Hey Siri, what's 225 minus 78? 225 minus 78 is 147. Hey Siri, what's 147 minus 78? 147 minus 78 is 69. So it says that we will use 64 degree water on this day. Interesting. Rams. All right, eight grams. Yeast, 365 grams of water. Let me just go. So I guess when you measure in grams, then it's just everything is more exact, which for bread, I don't know. I guess it has to be more exact. Okay, so we have 365 grams of water. And our water, I don't know, my temperature of my space is changing so i don't really know the water is at 90 degrees right now okay 500 grams of all-purpose flour well this is the first time i'm using a scale so it's it's taking me a little bit longer than normal to measure everything out because i'm not used to having everything so exact but i figure if I'm gonna do bread making and I'm gonna, if I really wanna learn how to do it, I should learn how to do it the right way first. And maybe if I get really good at it or something, then I don't need to use a scale later on. I don't know, I don't know. But I just thought I'm gonna invest in the proper tools that the book is saying just because I wanna learn the proper way. 4.9501, one gram. Okay. 500 grams of flour and 10 grams of salt. So weigh the bowl, 261 grams. Okay, then I press again, 261 grams. So. Oh, 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 too much, too much, too much. 10. It says combine in a large bowl, disperse the yeast into the water with a gentle swish of your fingers. Disperse the yeast into the water with a gentle swish of my fingers. Okay. Swish of my fingers. Let's see if we see a nice bubble bath of yeast. I guess there's something special about making your own bread and being able to put it on the dinner table for your family. 
of a homemade bread that day and I don't know I've always envisioned that as part of when I was going to raise a family and so maybe I should have learned this this uh I should have learned this skill earlier but I don't know I guess there's never a better time than now to do the things that you really want to do and as you can tell the house is really quiet now so Reed actually took uh, my daughter Ellie to the zoo and so I get to have some time to focus on this while um, he's out with her, which is nice. Next, add the flour on, on top of the water. Oh, I have to add the flour to the yeast. So I really should have put the yeast in that bowl. When I'm reading the back of this Instant Rise Rapid Reese, it says that you don't need to you don't need to put this in water. So I'm thinking that maybe it's not going to like have all those properties where it foams up. And I did it twice and it's the same. And the yeast is not bad. Like I bought it just a couple weeks ago. So I'm gonna take my chance and I'm gonna just try this. And we're gonna see how this goes. We're gonna put the yeast mixture in first. And then we are going to add the flour. Next, add the flour on top of the water and the yeast, and then you sprinkle on the salt. And it keeps it from coming in direct contact with the yeast, which can inhibit the rise. So we're gonna add the flour next. And sprinkle on the salt. Now it says to mix the dough and with hands. And I don't have like any kind of mixer, like I don't have any electric mixer here. So if I do get into bread making, maybe that's the next thing I'll invest in. But for now, we'll just use our hands. I guess as I do this, <laughs> it's a great time to talk and catch up with everybody. Hope everyone is doing well out there. It's right now, as I'm filming this, um, it is the middle of February and so I feel like since the new year's come around um, we've been just in and out of runny noses and sore throats and coughing and and all of that but other than that the family also is just doing well overall um, everybody is you know busy doing their own thing as the kids grow up my nieces and nephew they're into their own um, hobbies and everything and so just fun that we get to support them and all of the things that they like to do. We're also gearing up for our Ohana Art Summer Program. If you guys follow me, you know that we recently went to Japan for the show Peace in Your Wings that uh, my sister and uh, her wife Lori wrote, and which I directed. And um, every summer we have a summer program at Kennedy Theater where we hold classes and musical theater workshops and everything. It's like a full day of summer a summer experience for kids um, from third grade all the way to 12th grade so if you know anybody that's interested in uh, performing arts or anything like that um, be sure to look at the website ohanaarts.org for information but it's it's a full intense day but we, a lot of times we bring directors and people from the mainland too so kids get different opportunities to work with different people that they wouldn't be able to work with during the school year here. So it's just a nice change. Um, and I will be also directing as well during the summer. So I will be busy with that too. The ingredients should come together easily and produce a slack wet dough, which it is. But now my question is, how do I get all of this off my fingers? Like, do I just waste it all and rinse it off? Let me know in the comments if you are a bread maker or if you're watching this and laughing at me while I do this, which is totally fine too because I would laugh at myself too. <laughs> all right, so anyway, with that, we're gonna let this rest and relax for about 20 minutes. All right, so the dough has been sitting for about 20 minutes now. And the next step that we're going to do is called stretch and fold. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of 
uh, flour on my surface, I made sure to clean it right before I'm doing this. So it should be nice and clean. So the recipe says that imagine your dough has four corners. Pull each corner up and stretch it over the top of the dough to meet the opposite side. Visualizing a clock on the top of your bowl of dough. Pull the 12 o'clock corner up and down to the six. Okay, so. Let's try this. 12 o'clock corner, 12 o'clock corner to the six. And it says, pull the three o'clock corner, three o'clock to the nine. Work your way around the clock two or three times until the dough becomes a tight ball and no longer loose. 12 o'clock corner, six. Three o'clock corner, nine. 12 o'clock corner to the six, three o'clock corner to the nine. You have just achieved some gluten development. Wasn't that easy? Yeah, actually that was pretty easy. I was thinking it was gonna be a little bit more challenging than that. Place a flowery kitchen towel or plastic wrap, if that's what you have, over your bowl and go enjoy your life for an hour and 30 minutes. All right, well that was pretty easy. So we're gonna put this back into the bowl here. And I will add a little bit of a floured kitchen towel. What if I put some flour on the dough? Flour, just a little bit of flour. Okay. And then I put the towel over it. I will see you guys back in an hour and 30 minutes. Okay, so it's been an hour and a half and we are gonna check if our dough is ready. It definitely did rise, so that means that the yeast was good and I did not need to put it in water, but anyway, it worked, <laughs> that's good. Um, and it says, at an hour and a half, the dough should be noticeably lighter, which it feels larger and filled with air bubbles. Okay, so our dough looks lighter. It says it should look lighter, feel a little bit more buoyant, which it does. So, I'm gonna take it out. Put a little bit of flour on the, our surface. Just a tad here. It says, gently turn your dough onto a flour countertop. There it is. Shape the dough easily by giving it a gentle letter fold. Fold the far side, 12 o'clock down to, so fold the far side, 12 o'clock down to the middle. And sealing the dough against itself. Now fold the bottom to meet the seam and seal it. So that kind of like middle. Turn the dough so the seam is vertical. Okay, whoa and do the same thing. It says you should have a nice little rounded square shape, which I do, ta-da! As if it seems relaxed, then you can give it another set of letter folds. So I'm going to give it a little bit more because it does seem a little bit soft still. So fold this forward. It does feel airy though, so I think that's a good thing. That's what we've, 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 we've tried to accomplish, right? Is that it's airy. Place your dough round into a basket lined with floured kitchen towel. I bought this basket, I think this is for proofing, so I believe this is where it goes into now. And it says lined with a floured kitchen towel. So I'm, gonna, I'm assuming that I'm going to flour this basket first. So as I was waiting for my bread to rise, I was also reading in this recipe book, um, she has a, a recipe for like an eight hour rise or a 12 hour rise, which is kind of cool. So you can like make it before you go to work and then you, you know when you come home, then you can um, finish proofing it and then putting it in the oven. So I thought that would be kind of a fun one to try too, um, just because there's like a longer time where you don't necessarily need to be tending to the bread which probably most people 
don't have all day to sit around and wait for their bread to rise. Let this dough rise for one hour to one hour and 30 minutes until it feels airy. Oh, seam side down, shoot. Okay, seam side down. Okay, so while the dough is finishing proofing, I'm gonna turn on the oven to 475 degrees. That's really hot. And it says to put the um, Dutch oven in the oven so it's already hot when the bread goes in. So I'm going to add the Dutch oven in here. That. Okay. We are at about an hour and 15 minutes. Want to check it looks like it's getting nice and big but I think it's if it if you push in the dough and it comes oh it's the indent is left I mean that it might be ready soon so let's look at the bread together Ta-da! wow flour your work surface well and tip the loaf out of your basket onto the seam Seam side up. Okay, carefully pull uh, your Dutch oven out of the oven and place it on top of the stove. All right, so let's do that first. I'm gonna take this out, seam side up. Wait, it's a little stuck. Seam side up, and it says take out the Dutch oven. Ooh. This is like really hot. Pick up the dough with your hands and gently drop it into the, to the Dutch oven seam side up. So we put it in with our seam side up. We're just gonna gently. So we're gonna cover this and then put it back in for 25 minutes. Okay, 25 minutes. So I did notice that it was already starting to brown at the top. Here it is. So I put the temperature down to 450. So I believe it's ready. It's been 15 minutes. And it looks nicely golden brown. Turn this off. And we're gonna take it out of the oven. My first loaf of bread. This is what it looks like. Nice golden brown. It feels hard. Hollow. The finished loaf should be golden brown and will sound hollow when you thump it with your fingers. Let your finished loaf cool on a wire rack for 30 minutes to let the interior crumb set, making it easier to slice. How do I take it out? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Our loaf of bread is done. First loaf, I'm so excited. It's been cooling now for about 30 minutes. So I feel like it's ready to cut into, to try. So I'm just gonna cut a small piece. Ooh, that crunch though. Wow, it's pretty dense. This is what it looks like on the inside. Mmm, this is good. I feel like it came out perfect like for my first loaf. This is really good. I'm pretty impressed. Wow, just four ingredients. It's amazing what four ingredients can do. Let me know if you want to see more of my bread baking journey. I'm really excited. Now that I have my first successful loaf under my belt, I'm really excited to try new recipes. Do you want to try my first loaf of bread? Yeah. Yes? Oh, she said yes. I okay. see you. Come here, try a bite. You want to hold it? Okay, how about this? Mmm, it's kind of hard. Okay, how about the soft part? Sure. Here, try it. How is it? It's more. How's the bread? It's more. No, how's the bread? It's... Well, you know. 
Can't win them all. No bread. Want more bread? No bread. She wants more. Bread. It must be good. Oh. Keep watching because we are having family dinner tonight. So I will take this loaf to our dinner and I will share it with my family and see what they think. And yeah, just get all of the reactions. But this is like, seriously, this is like the first ideal, perfect first loaf that I think I could ever make. First of all, it smells amazing. Mmm. Mmm. That was not a very lively. Mmm. Here, let me do it. A better, more lady like thing. See, when it was fresh, it was like crunchy, crispy. And sweet. No, but you know what? It tastes like it came right out of like, like, like the Brea Bake Cream. I, mean, I wouldn't have guessed, you know? Wow. It's so good. Wow. It is, though, yeah? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not bad for my first. Food. It's lightweight. Like, you know how sometimes when people make homemade bread, it's heavy? Uh huh. It's very light. It's good. And this is a no need recipe. Isn't it interesting? Really? Yeah. Mm. Water, salt, yeast, and what was the other thing? Flour? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. And I make sourdough? Very good. Oh no, this isn't sourdough, this is right now. Oh, it's like a bad one. It's just like fresh bread. Yeah, really like, good. Fresh from the bakery. Mm. Like La Brea Bakery. That's exactly what I was thinking. Like when wow. you walk into it. Very good. Mm -hmm. I like the crust, the, the crust is really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's already, I can tell it's already spongy and soft and with a good crust on the outside. It reminds you of sour, sourdough, yeah? Yeah. It actually, it tricks you into thinking it's sourdough, but it's... What kind of bread is it? It's literally just yeast, flour, water, and salt. Mm. This is very good. This would be good sandwich bread. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I feel like this would be good sandwich bread. Yeah. So I can make this into a loaf. I think this should happen like weekly. I might, you know. Let me buy bread from the That's the anymore. goal. I think that's the goal. Good. It's really good. Well done. Is that a high? Mm, it's the best I is here since. It's high. Very good. How's it bread, Aiko? Oh, wow.